Welcome to this video on Fly Me to the Moon, one of the pieces from the Step 1 Technical Repertoire Pack that classes have been working from uh, since the start of this year. This video won't follow the template for new repertoire coming up, as most classes have completed stages 1 and 2 with this piece, or at least attempted them, and are ready to kind of build towards stage 3. I'm also working from a script, which is something new and exciting because typically my video demos are done uh, between classes or if a student's running late, I might try and get a video uh, done then. So there is rarely enough time to actually have a script for these things. Um, so here we go. If it looks like I'm reading, it's because I am. The three stages for this project are not divided by difficulty, so they should be um, tackled by anyone from their second year of playing onwards. High school students that have covered the Step 1 Major and Harmonic Minor scales, which you might remember from Seagull Scales Step 1 here, we have our 8 note major scale, C up to high C for trumpet, B flat to high B flat for trombone. Um, we have our major scale, and further down the page we have the Harmonic Minor scale, which starts down on low A for trumpet, and includes a G sharp note added in, and starts on low G for trombone, or baritone, and has an F sharp added in on the way up. If you are a high school student that has worked through those, or if you're a primary school kid who's just super keen and went and worked out how to play both of those yourself, then you're going to be able to work through everything in this episode and everything in the next one as well when we tackle stage three, which is, to my mind, where the fun is really at. The goal of this project is to explore a familiar jazz style Create your own melodic variations, kind of your interpretation of the basic tune, and to experiment with some simple improvisation using that B flat major scale and its relative minor, the harmonic minor from that sheet we just showed you. Now that we're not limited to trying to cover every aspect of musicianship and brass playing in 20 or 30 minutes, we can take our time with this and hopefully really enjoy each of these steps and feel like we're building our skills as we go along. I've got this here with me, I thought I'd bring it back up just in case any parents have been wondering this whole time, what is this whole seagull scales thing? Here we have clearly a picture of a seagull. Some students have suggested that it looks like a butt. It's not a butt, it is a seagull, and it has a very important musical purpose. It's a bit of a map, a diagram of the first five keys that brass players need to know and need to master on their instruments. Right in the middle of the seagull, is C major for trumpet and B flat major for trombone. That is where everybody starts out on these instruments. Um, and the first half of most method books, uh, for example, Sound Innovations, which I've been using recently, and Accent on Achievement and Standard of Excellence, Yamaha Band Method, any of these books that we use because we have mixed instrument classes, they're going to start out with the notes from that particular scale. Um, the words scale and key, for our purposes today, they're pretty much interchangeable. Um, off to one side of the seagull, we have scales that either add sharps, if you're a trumpet player, C major heading up this way, you get a scale with one sharp, which is called G major, and continuing to the end, you have a scale with two sharps called D major. You might have done a bit of playing with that scale for songs like um, Baby Shark or some other classics from your first year. And heading the other way are scales that have fewer flats, or in the case of trumpet players, you start adding flats in. So you would have F major at the top, which has one flat in it, and at the very end you have B flat major, which has two flats, and at that point the low instruments are saying, oh that's easy, because that's what they start with. It all seems very confusing, but with the help of our seagull diagram, our map for the skills we need to uh, develop fluency in, it'll all come together nicely. Enough of that tangent though. We are working from step one technical repertoire, uh, song number seven, Fly Me to the Moon. Um, on the newer versions of the sheets, it looks like this. And in order, our goals for this project are, number one, to learn a basic version of Fly Me to the Moon. This is basically playing the dots on the page. Uh, step two is to create your own variation of 
one chorus from Fly Me to the Moon. And step three is to create your own solo, your improvised solo that fits with the backing chords that the rest of a band would play if you were performing this piece. So the chords that the piano player or the guitarist or that the double bass or electric bass are outlining, you need to play notes that kind of match with those. And luckily for us, on this particular tune, it's pretty achievable with a bit of practice. So, stage one. This should be very quick because uh, most, if not all, of our continuing classes have experimented with this step already. Learn the basic tune. Luckily for, oh, in fact, I'm gonna try a YouTuber trick here. This is how professional I am. Um, if you click here, or possibly here or here or here, depending on how affluent I am in YouTube editing, um, if you can click one of those things or just go to musiclessonswithmrtaylor.com, you can see me demonstrating the tunes from this pack on the trumpet. So for students that either haven't heard this song at all, maybe they were away, or have forgotten how it should sound, go watch me play it on the trumpet and then you can hear those tricky jazz rhythms. Um, jazz players have been learning to play uh, music that way for a long time. It's called an oral tradition, oral meaning listening. Uh, you listen to great players, that's, I would not say I'm great, but I've listened to lots of great players, and then you try and emulate or mimic how they play the song. We then, uh, in our class setting, we then apply our music reading skills to interpreting the dots and the lines to make sure we are playing it accurately in terms of the two basic elements, the rhythm and the pitch. Because when we have five or six musicians in the room with loud instruments, we want to have those basic things the same. If you were playing this by yourself or you're preparing it for a solo performance, you could go straight to stage two, which is kind of creating your own interpretation of the tune. And you will have noticed if you did the homework from whenever we started this with your class, the homework of looking up two versions of this on YouTube or Spotify and finding a couple that you really like. If you've done that homework, you will notice that not every jazz musician sings or plays this melody the same way. And that's fine. That's expected even. That's what makes it uh, interesting and fun and enjoyable to hear different people's interpretation. Uh, so rather than me play the whole thing again, go find that video. It's on the front page of my website. Um, me playing the trumpet. The backing track that we've been using in class is also there and if I'm clever enough I'll put boxes somewhere on the screen to make that happen or just link them in the description below. I'm pretty sure I can manage that. Stage two. This is the bit that your class may not have uh, got up to and this is the first kind of creative element. Let's presume you've taken the time to watch the demo, uh, sing along with it a couple of times, listening carefully to the offbeat swing rhythms that I'm playing along the way. You've also practiced controlling the high notes down in that uh, second chorus of the piece where it goes up to high E for trumpet, high D for trombone, and right near the end you get a high C for trombone and a high D for trumpet. You've practiced controlling that sound and maybe, if your class have talked about this, even adding a little bit of vibrato, a bit of that singing-like waver to the note using the chewing gum method. Maybe you've even got that far. Um, if you're up to that, this next step should be very straightforward. Um, step two is really simple in some ways. Your goal is to create your own variation of that tune and we are going to focus on the first of the two kind of key elements I mentioned before, rhythm. The pitch side of things, pitch meaning uh, different high or low sounds. You can add that in a bit later on, but for now we are just focusing on the rhythm. Your goal is to take the main tune, for example, fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. You take that tune and then you alter the timing uh, in ways that you think sound cool. And that's basically it. Um, have a bit of a listen to this. Here is an example of me uh, creating my own variation of the first couple of lines of the tune. And all I'm going to change is the rhythm of the music.
Now, I think there is a small chance I skipped one of the notes in there, but as long as the audience could listen to that and still recognize that it was based on Fly Me to the Moon, that's okay. We're not too worried about things being uh, perfect, having exactly one high C to start or one high B flat to start. Uh, you could even try adding extra notes. For example, and after this, you're gonna have to pause the video and try some things yourself. For example, what if I was to double or even triple some of the steps in that melodic sequence? By melodic sequence, all I mean is that shape of starting high and then stepping down and then back up and moving down to finish. Following that shape of tune, but maybe uh, throwing in some uh, double or triple notes. Let's have a listen. At that stage, I'm still not convinced that it actually sounds really nice, but it sounds vaguely like Fly Me to the Moon. It had a steady beat, had some uh, jazz rhythms similar to what you might hear in one of those videos that you watched if you did your homework before. Um, and I could continue to experiment until I found something that really sounded good to me. Uh, the second half of stage two, creating your variation, is to extend it to a whole 15 or 16 bar chorus. So that's basically your first four lines of the song, not including the doobie doobie da, which is at the end of line four and leads you into the next chorus. Not including that. Basically, the first verse of the tune, you need to come up with your own variation using the backing track. Now, this is where we're going to see what happens because I've got my phone plugged into a little Bluetooth speaker down here. Normally in class, we do this using the laptop, but the laptop's busy recording my voice and trombone playing. So, experimentation time. Maybe it'll work great, maybe it won't. Maybe I'll have to come back later and do some tricky um, saving the backing track and recording directly into the computer. Let's not get sidetracked on that. Here is a whole chorus, if everything works well, of Fly Me to the Moon, in which I am altering the rhythm, the timing of the notes, and maybe adding an extra uh, pitch, an extra kind of leading note here and there. Let's see what happens. This is kind of very, very, very basic improvisation in some ways. I'm bringing up music lessons with MrTaylor.com on my phone. I could also go to YouTube and find this backing track about halfway down the page, just underneath the video of me demonstrating the tunes from this technical repertoire pack is this video with a picture of a trumpet melting. I'm gonna hit play on that. You'll have four bars of piano introduction and then I'm gonna play my variation. I'm then going to let the music keep playing and if everything's working all right, the next time it comes around, you can try doing your own variation of that first chorus. Let's see if that all comes together. Thank you. 
So that very final chorus, um, after you had a chance to do your own variation, I have no idea how good or bad the mix of sound was. The little speaker was freaking out. I need a better PA speaker in here. Um, I decided to do a bit of an example of what stage three can involve. So this was a recap of stage one. Learn the tune, watch the demo video on the front page of my website. Stage two, create your own rhythmic variation, maybe with the occasional added scale note in there as well, of the main tune, but keep it recognizable. The audience need to be able to tell what song it is. Um, and stage three, for next time, which isn't on the board yet, uh, stage three is to use our major and harmonic minor scales in a way that matches up with the backing band to create your own solo um, completely improvised. There are other steps. You do not have to jump in at the deep end and just go nuts with scale notes. There are other steps and uh, strategies we can use, but basically, it gives you the freedom to make up your own solo and make up your own music. Not only does that, um, can it be really inspiring in the same way that rock musicians would, but it's something that you can really dig your teeth into and take your time exploring. I hope that's been helpful. Uh, email me any questions you've got, uh, contact me through the website, and please send me videos of your progress. Thanks a lot.